Welcome to the Empower Hour. I am Al Kumar and this is my co-host. I am Hanifa. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we're here today. Um, we're gonna our topic of discussion today is going to be on relationships. Yes. Black, Black love. love. <laughs> okay, and how and how we still have work to do. We definitely have some work to do. <laughs> so just want to share with you a little bit about where we are. We are at Everlasting Life Vegan Restaurant, 9185 Central Avenue. That's in Capitol Heights, Maryland. It's right inside of the old Hampton Mall Shopping Center, which, which is now known as Kingdom Square, right next to 24 Hour Fitness for Less. So if you're hungry for some really tasty vegan soul food, come join us for that. We serve you for food as well as smoothies. We have desserts. There's popcorn. We have a, a, a real famous. Have you ever had one of the um, Garvey burgers? Yes. You have? Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's an <laughs> awesome burger. It's That's called the Garvey twice. Burger. Yes. Um, uh, in recognition of our ancestor, Marcus Garvey. So again, you come on out and join us. We do a whole lot of different things here at Everlasting Life. It's not just um, a restaurant, but it's, I call it a culture hub. So it's a hub for all types of different things culturally where you can come and we do a dinner, um, a movie and a dinner night each and every Friday night. We air a new documentary and then we have a discussion that follows right after. You know what's showing this, this Friday? Yeah, yeah. This Friday we are showing the spook who sat by the door. Ooh. <laughs> and if you guys know anything about that movie, um, it came out in the late 60s, early 70s. It was banned from the movies when it first aired. So, um, yeah, that goes give you a little bit of... Um, you know, intel about what to expect. Mm -hmm. So that's a spook who sat by the door. We'll be we we'll be airing that and talking about that uh, this Friday, starting at seven. All movies start promptly at seven p.m. Irritated Genie does his chopping it up with Genie uh, Community Forum each and every Monday, starting at six thirty. Again, right here at Everlasting Life. That is always free. He takes a different topic each week and he chops it up with the community. Come out and we have just have a community discussion about it. And then we then, then we do solution oriented events. Yes. So we find out what the problem is and then we take steps to um, to fix it. And so yeah, you definitely want to come out for that as well. What else is going on here? Oh, the Solstice. The Solstice Shopping Bazaar. It takes place first Saturdays of every month. We take the dining area and we fill it with vendors and you can come shop with all types of local craft artists they come out with all different types of wares and um, you know health and beauty products and all anything jewelry come on out shop again that's always free we're revamping the solstice as well so moving forward you're going to see some some exciting um things going on around the solstice shopping bazaar so come on out for that as well all right so with that being said, let's jump right into the discussion. And family, we need your help because this is your show. Yeah. So we, you, we don't want to be sitting here all day and just rambling off to you guys. We want you involved in the discussion. So please, you know, by all means, share what your feelings. You know, some of us are a little shy. And so, you know, you may be thinking something and, and, and don't want to say it. But you'll be surprised that you know what your com your com how your comments can help others right <laughs> you know there might be somebody listening because there's people chime in from us for all through all over the world and you'll never know how you know holding back on what you have to say may um may may be an impact for somebody else if they hear it so definitely you know face them fears fight them fears and come on and share and communicate with us honey so you wanted to say anything to the people uh no, um, my, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, um, uh, talking about the solstice, I usually take part in it. Mm -hmm. um, I do make statement airings. Uh, it's forever if you are looking for some nice cultural, sort of rootsy <laughs> um, uh, statement airings, you can go to my shop um, at Thanks for the Journey 9.etsy.com and check it out. Say I actually have a pair on today. 
<laughs> you see them? Come closer so yeah. they can see. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And she makes her pieces. Yes, all handmade. Do. And as y'all know, I'm a jewelry artist as well. So, I mean, I'm, I call myself a jewelry artist. Mm -hmm. I, I don't <laughs> create, but I do shop for all the pieces that I make. I create some of the pieces, you know. But that don't stop me and my sister from working together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, you know, we both do this in the same field, but it's enough out there for all of us. Absolutely. So, yes. yeah, support her. Yes. Support her. Okay, let's get it talking. What's what a, what's the what's the deal? Hey Damon, hey Jalen, all you guys, thank you so much for chiming in. I, think I saw Joyce. Hi, <laughs> somewhere in there, right there. <laughs> if you guys saw the discussion I I live streamed on my page this past Monday, it was called Gender Wars. Uh, what was it? The, bat the, the battle between black men and women or something to that effect. Well, that was not the, the Empower Hour show. I was a co-host on the Irritated Genie show. He does a show every Monday from 2 to 4 p.m. And he asked that I come on and co-host with him. But that show was so impactful. Oh, my goodness. It was so impactful. And people are still talking about it. Very strong opinions. <laughs> so we thought it might be a good, you know, because there's so much that we can discuss around this topic of, re of relationships that, you know, we, we um, you know, let's broach it again. So here we are. So I want to know from you guys, what is the deal? What, what is your challenges? What is, is your relationship perfect <laughs> in every way? You know, is everything smooth sailing? Um, and if so, why? Why do you think that is? We want to hear from you. If it's not, if you are going through some turbulent chimes and or you just can't figure this thing out when it comes to male and female relationships and why it become, it, it, and it gets complicated for you, we want to hear that too. We want to hear that too because our goal here and mission on the Empower Hour is to um, solve problems, you know, and find solutions and get to a healthier place. We're not here to just ramble on about, you know, what our issues are. We, we, we're here to solve them. So, and we can yes. do that collectively together as a village, as a community, as a, as a whole, as a unit. So let's, let's chop it up. So we can, we can actually start off, I, I think, talking about why is it even important for us to have this discussion? Okay. Why is it important for us to talk about this particular topic? Mm -hmm. We have so many other issues within our community. I'm going to try to speak up, guys, in our community. So it's why, why do we need to talk about this? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the first question that we could kind of put out there. Okay. Why do you think? Why do you think it's important um, to talk about and heal our, our relationships? Um, let's see, he says single, meeting men with deep-rooted mommy issues. Oops. They need healing of their lack of knowing how to treat and love women. Yes. Uh, we, so I think that to your she, question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because oftentimes you hear about daddy issues, and I think it's just because there's this, um, you know, a lot of absent absentee dads mm -hmm. in in our community mm -hmm. so it's almost like we zoom in on that but then there are the there are women who then have to step up right and raise these kids mm -hmm. because of the absentee dad right and so there's a that masculine aspect that's that's missing i personally think oftentimes women try to compensate and make up for the missing masculine right mm. but it ends up being a warped kind you know so you tend to I think we've talked about this before where I often see and this is not all but you'll see single mothers just really rigid and hard mm. you know just just hard just coming off so sort of when you say almost com masculine compensate like for the like being to make a disciplinarian so not necessarily disciplinarian don't necessarily have to be it's not necessarily a masculine th um, trait I don't think so um, but, you know, like saying things, for example, I'm your mother and your father, you okay. know, calling your sons, my little daddy. What? You know, this is my little man. No, he five. That's your son. You know, just kind of <laughs> like different things that we probably don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. And then these kids, sometimes they grow and you see a 12 year old walking around acting like he's, you know, the man of the house and this is what you this is how you're supposed to treat a woman the mommy issues if she can tell us specifically what she think what do we call mommy issues 
okay. you know because it can go either way we have uh men who their mom never really let them be boys you know what i mean they've been cuddled mm. yeah i see that a lot yes a whole lot <laughs> i see that a lot you know right and so to, yeah. to stand on their own two feet is almost difficult you know, you don't cook like my mom. You don't do this like my mom. So I'm not sure specifically which mommy issues. I feel like we have a number that we can touch on. So how does that play out though in, in relationships when they grow older and get into their own relationships with, with, the, with their significant others? If they've been coddled a lot mm -hmm. as, as, as young ones, does anyone want to share? And you know, you guys have a pulse beat on what kind of, you know, the, the end result of that looks like? They don't, they don't want to do their part as men. It's, 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 it's almost like it's expected that the woman does everything. You need to go clean, rub my feet, my back, mm. and, and sometimes go out there and make that money. Whoa. Wow. That's just, that's one thing, okay. you know, I, at least I think. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, um, let's see. Bertram. Hey, Bertram. How you doing? Um, Sui says, let them know you appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading something else. <laughs> Don't mind me. Sandra said, it's important because we need to show, expose our babies that, that there are healthy black marriages. Yeah, and they are. Yes. That's definitely, you know, we do. And I think we have a, we, we tend to do that too. We'll focus in, like you said, yes. Hanifa, we'll zero in on the problems so much that the, that, that, that the solution to the problem gets swallowed up and then when the, the, the people who are doing it right, we don't, we, you know, they get swallowed up too because the main focus is on all the wrong, the bad, and all oh, this is not right and da da da. And even the right ones we're skeptical of. We're skeptical mm. of those relationships that's, that seems to be doing well. But it's like, that. and when I say skeptic, we, we don't trust it. Um, mm. It's sort of like, yeah, they probably, he probably doing something behind her back or, you know, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Because we're so accustomed to seeing it done wrong. Yes. So when it's but done right, it's like, uh, you you know, you the minority. Right. And right so, don't mean perfect. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, I agree with you there. I definitely agree. Yeah, that's definitely important, Sandra. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I had another thought as it pertained uh -huh. to what she said, too, because the babies... We need to expose our babies that there are healthy black marriages. Yeah, that's definitely key because that's the next generation, and they they act on out on what they see. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I said not not just marriages, relationships. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good female to female relationship. Female. To female. So yes. We were talking female, about yes. that because on the upcoming show, I would love to discuss this thing we have, this sisters thing we have with fighting against one another and jealousy for the trivial yeah. of things. Yes. It's like you, we can't be in, you know, together and doing something and, and out of sisterly love without the cat, the cat in fighting thing. Yeah. That's a big thing in our community. Huge issue okay so what came up in the discussion yes um, Monday evening when we did the chopping it up and on this same topic here at the restaurant um, a lot of the ladies were saying that they have an issue with the men lying so much <laughs> getting caught in lies and infidelity and cheating and all that kind of stuff so falls on the line yeah, and it was a, interesting how the brother, did you remember the response that the brother had, one of the brothers had shared as to why they lie so much about, oh, yeah, you want to talk, I think he was, he was pretty much saying that, um, you know, everything that they do as far as men, you know, um, it's for us, mm -hmm. and so if there's something where they're falling short, you know, they're lying, particularly. Um, they'll they rather lie to appear a certain way before, uh, in, you know, in our eyes. Right. To tell the truth and expose that quote-unquote weakness that they may may have. Right. That was one of the, the right. reasons for lying that, that was shared. Right. He had mentioned, exactly, he had mentioned, like, that men notice what women are attracted to. Right. And he said he noticed 
that a lot of women women are attracted to the alpha the male. Alpha male, right? The male that got you know going on, got maybe his stuff together, got his stuff together. Uh -huh. You know, look sharp, don't look like he has his stuff together, right? Yes. And so what they'll do is if they themselves don't have that going on in their own world, right. when they know that's what the woman wants, right? They'll lie about it yes. just so the woman can be more attracted to them. Right. I found that interesting. Yeah. That's a that's a self-esteem issue, I think. But I feel like it goes both ways. I think that women to a certain extent do certain things too that they think will get a man a, a man a, attraction. Okay. As much as we talk about the implants that women are getting in the in the buttocks, right? The breast implants and so forth, and we always connect it to low self-esteem oftentimes, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think women watch what men watch. You know, we pay attention to what men watch. Mm -hmm. And it's so if you're a flat chested woman <laughs> and you're with your significant other and you realize you know, big butts make his head turn. Mm. You may start to feel, oh, big boobs makes his head, big breasts make his head turn. Okay. You may start to feel insecure about your flat chest, right? So women do pay attention to those things. And then the media is very powerful very. because the people who are putting these women up there, right, to say, Don't wow, like this is sexy, are men. Mm. In the mm -hmm. music videos, mm -hmm. and the, you know, these are men. So it, it it sends the message not just to us adults, but to you think about the teen girls, the younger girls. That if you want to get yourself a man that makes a certain amount of money, or you know, this is what you need to look like. Right. So they get that message through the media as well. Okay. Okay. We have a phone call and yes. studio hotline number. Family is two four zero four five 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 nine three four. Again, that's two four zero. Four five 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 nine three four. If you wanted to get in on the discussion right here via um, phone call, caller, hello, you're online. Who do you have for us? Yes, this is Rivian. How are you all doing today? Hi, I'm sorry. Repeat your name again. We didn't hear you. Where are you calling from? This is Rivian from Washington D.C. Oh, hi, Rivian from D.C. What you got for us? Okay, I just want to say that. I'm currently in the middle of writing three books right now. I'm so passionate about everything that you all discussed. Um, and today, to make a long story short, I think we need a movement. We need a movement because back in slavery, we were taught to go against each other. That was the white man's only strength to keep us separated so that we wouldn't come together and become strong enough to overpower him. So we right. Down this tradition of just competing with each other, you know, our, our men don't quite value us the way that they should for so many reasons. How we look, and and I might say, in the entertainment industry, yeah. you know, so they get this idea that they're only supposed to look at women for lustful reasons. I could go on for days. The white man made it seem like the white woman was more special. The lighter you are, the more loud you are. Right. I could just go on for days about all these dysfunctional right. things right. that we were taught and we passed them down, not even realizing it. And it's gotten so far out of hand that we need a movement. We when you say a movement, um, Ridian, what does that look like? I'm sorry. You say we need a movement. What does that look like to you? What what type of movement are you referring to? Well, I would like to see a group of people come together that are focused on doing everything out of love and positivity. Okay. No negativity at all. Everything that we're trying to do, keep our families together, keep our marriages together, raise our young ladies to be clean. Right. Everything it is that we're trying to do, we need to come together, but we need a group of people that are only going to operate out of love and positivity. Gotcha. That needs to be the foundation first because that's one of the things that's keeping us separated. Right. We just don't have enough love. We just don't have enough positivity. Right. Well, well, you know what, Ridian? Thank you so much thank for you, calling Ridian. in and sharing that with us. And I agree. I agree with you um, that we definitely need to... Um, to have more love in the world, yeah. collectively yes. love. That that she's talking unity. Yes. We need to come exactly together in unity more because we're so divided and so for for 
in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And that's the overwhelming example. sometimes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The divisions <laughs> that between yes. us. We can't even have a conversation like this. Yes. And sometimes without, you know what I'm saying, divisions around even, you know, coming together. And as you, as you grow as a, as a female, you have to also be able to share. This is the positivity that Ray and just spoke of. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to share your experiences. Um, sometimes where we come from, mm -hmm. there's a, sometimes there's a shame attached to that because you know how we say, oh, I was a hot mess then, you know? Mm -hmm. But you've grown, you've evolved. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your road to getting there you know mm -hmm. and oftentimes we we shy away from talking to to one another about it but it's empowering and it's, in, it's uplifting and sometimes people need to hear that story yes. you know like um maybe you we talked about the woman being mouthy right right <laughs> maybe you were right. that female you know and you have to work on yourself and say you know i have to hear the brother out sometimes <laughs> Right. You know, if I want him to hear me, I'll just learn, like share your journey with other other women. I'm, right. I'm speaking from a female perspective. I agree. You know, um, I agree. Yeah, and and even dealing with with males. You know, another thing with the single parent thing, households. Sometimes when you come from that as a female, because we just spoke on the on the woman, I mean yeah. on the men. Yeah. Uh, be mama mama boys. Right. Um, but we don't talk about the females and what that looks like. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and trying to figure out not knowing what part the male plays in your life. Right. So when a male does come, you know, it's sort of like, okay, why are you here? You don't really know how to interact. Yeah, how to how to work, you know, work with them peacefully actually. Right. Because you didn't have an example of that. Right. And if you both are coming from that place. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. You know, if you both are coming from that 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 energy, then whoo, that's then that becomes a double dynamic. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. like it, like Kim, like you said, success stories. Like Kim says, mm -hmm. I have been with my wife for 29 years. Oh, thanks congrats. to God. Yeah. Yep. He says, the closer you're to God, the better relationship you have with your spouse or loved ones. What do you guys think about that? You know, and and then that's another thing that divides us, the whole God concept. Oh yeah, the religion piece. <laughs> yes. So you know, again, there's so many you know divisions that that it becomes even more challenging for us to you know to work it out. So, but it's not impossible. I don't even know why we talk about the um, this low self-esteem. And when we talk about that, we mainly focus on, on the woman. And I think we uh, a lot of our brothers are struggling with that, that lack of knowledge of self, mm -hmm. um, the lack of not, not really knowing themselves, um, lacking that self-esteem as well. For some reason, we don't identify it as self-esteem issues in the males for whatever reason. Right. Um, it's almost like we feminize, um, feminized uh, self-esteem. It's specifically yeah. a female thing, yeah. but I think it just looks different Good in point. males. Um, you know, so they kind of. Good point. That's just like the whole angry black woman uh, yes syndrome or whatever yes. that we've been labeled as. Well, I know a whole lot of angry black men. Yes, Ooh, you know, yeah. I know a lot of angry black men, mm -hmm. but for some odd reason, we become the angry black woman. You know, and yeah. that and, and the man is out of that equation altogether. Again, it just shows how much we need healing on both sides. Yes. Both yes. sides. Um, yes, we can do it, Ridian. Yes, thank you again for um, calling in. Um, how listening to each other. <laughs> and that's for me, for me personally, I'm coming from a personal perspective here. That is like a pet peeve of mine because I, it, 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 it can be frustrating for a woman to have some good suggestions for a man and he don't want to take it because you know I don't you know I don't take advice from a woman and that's I've heard men say that yeah. to me you know what I'm saying I don't take you know I don't I don't follow no woman I don't go behind you know what I'm saying know your, it's, know your role know your yeah place. so it becomes like a macho let, let me lead yeah yeah but it's like the whole time I'm like but wait I got some good things that'll help you lead better <laughs> if you would just you know what I'm saying possibly hear me out and a lot of times we don't even like to hear each other right. out let alone take advice so I think that's a big thing and, and I found that when I touched on this topic um the other night the audience a lot of the women in the audience were shaking their heads like yup yup like they, they were agreeing with me that the whole listening part was a challenge for them as well I would imagine I think I can say this as a female we don't listen well either 
you mm -hmm. know, as female. We mm -hmm. really don't. Um, especially, uh, uh, we touched on this before we went on air, um, a lot of women, black women, um, are the most educated, right? So mm -hmm. what's happening now is they take on this, they may be with a brother who is maybe not as educated as them, if at all. I'm mm -hmm. talking about college education here, right? Okay. Um, but he, he helps around the house, okay? Right. So let's say the, the issue is not the financial piece, the mon you know, the monetary piece. Right. Um, it becomes an issue of intellect now. And you, as, as females, mm -hmm. we gotta be careful when we feel like we know more mm -hmm. than our significant other, even if you do. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to know how to reel that in. You know, I I am I I had to learn that. Mm -hmm. I I'm a thinker. I'm always in my thoughts, right? right. And and because I write, right? Right. But sometimes I've I've met um, guys that I know for a fact, like you haven't read in a long time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Huh? Yes, yes. You just haven't read in a long time, <laughs> or you haven't read the material that I read. <laughs> Well, right. You know, so looking for that conversation, and I think for me, I had to learn how to pay attention to because reading is what I like. Right. I have to pay attention to what they like. Right. You right. know, and kind of build on that. Yeah. You know, if I'm really interested in them. Yeah. And then there's that whole unequally yoked piece as well. However, we want to define that. I also think it's hard when you don't have much in common. You do need to be on the same page. Yeah. For it to work, they talk about building towards a certain purpose, a certain goal. That's a good point yeah. too, to talk, touch on because I think a, what we, we do that too. We try to put a round hole in a square, pe a square peg in a round hole and it don't fit from the onset. But we try to force it, force it, force it and it just becomes chaotic, even more chaotic because we're not equally yoked. We don't have anything, you know, the, the, you know, no goals, no similar goals in mind. You know, the the, the whole spiritual realm may be too different in different areas. Absolutely. You know, don't even know what each other. Your morals, like. yeah. Your morals yeah. may be on opposite ends of the spectrum, and but you know, she's cute. Oh, yes. he's cute. Oh, he's cute. And I get that little so, fuzzy feeling inside. Yeah. And that's what I wanted Ooh. to touch on that as well. Um, is it possible that our definition of love is warped? Mm. Is that possible? Like What's what, we, what we're calling love, saying. maybe it's not really. So we're getting in these relationships and it's like, well, I love him. You know, I love her. <laughs> You know, you're almost you're almost obsessed with the person. Yeah. You know, because whatever it is that they that part of yourself they're speaking to. Right. You know. But then it comes to the other important things when you're talking about longevity, right? Right. What's important? How how is this relationship? What do we need for for this relationship to last? Right. And then you realize that you're coming up with nothing. So you're basically attempting to build um, off of like mutual attraction. Yes. You're attempting to build a foundation off of just attraction alone. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what it is. Like the tingly, fuzzly feelings. Ooh, it's like ooh, air. I like him. He <laughs> likes me. Yeah. Yeah, let's get married. You yeah, know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> off of the fuzzy feeling. Right. Like inside. Like, ooh, you just make me feel so good. You want to be my wife. You want to be my husband. Right. You know, and then you get together and you realize, I don't really know you. In fact, I don't like you that much. <laughs> I don't like you know? at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting concept. And I found found I've noticed um, situations or witness situations where um, women do that and I always wonder if that has anything to do with like the whole daddy syndrome too being so quick to rush in you know what I'm saying? As, as opposed to giving yourself time and space to get to know one another but you guys rush in and you want to get married right away or you you know, you're making decisions, you're moving in right. right away, having a baby right. right away off those fuzzy feelings as opposed to giving you both time and opportunity to figure each other out. And does that? Ha I think we have uh, like a, 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 what's the opposite of surplus? What am I trying to say? We have a deficiency. A deficit, a deficit deficiency, yes. Of love. Mm -hmm. You know, just pure unadulterated love in in this society, and it's like the least little thing that feels like that, we devour it like right. hungry, we, like hungry wolves. We also think that love means possession to possess another person. This is mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's it and and if, okay, now that this is mine, I have to make this into what works for me. Mm. Okay, but 
what we don't realize is when you love someone, you have to respect their journey as well. You have to allow them to evolve mm -hmm. into who they need to evolve into. And most of us don't know how to do that because it's sort of like, well, you're not you're not making me feel good by what but what you're choosing, and that comes along with getting to know each other as well. Yes. Taking the time and getting to know each other. What are your plans? Right. What, you know, what are your plans? And please, not with not. I don't want the vagueness of it. I need you to specifically tell me hmm. what your plans are. What, how do you intend to get there? Let's share that. Right. Let's share each other's vision. Right. You know, and try to see does, is this person a good fit for me? Right. or not and right. if it's not learning as we grow older it shouldn't take us that long to figure that out anyway right and what's the rush what is what's the rush where are we going <laughs> it's like if we okay we heaven <laughs> you funny <laughs> okay let's see what the family is saying um thanks Saladin. um mommy issues okay let's see um, Sandra says, I saw so much dysfunction growing up that I wanted to be a change agent. Mm -hmm. By all means, not perfect. Yeah, that's a lot. It's like, you know, that's the two, the two most powerful dynamics, I think. Right. You see it and you say, I, no, there's no way, or you, you experience it Absolutely. and you're like, there's no way I'm going to do that when I, I, when, need when I get mine yes. to grow up. Yes. Or you experience it. And you don't know no other way because you you experience it and it's the culture of your home and right? so you carry it's that normalized on. and it's like no this is what this is for example then I'm going to I'm, I will say this as a female because um, that's the really the only perspective I can speak from um, <laughs> Me too. Um, as a, 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 sometimes I've seen where women they've come from chaotic environments right mm -hmm. where there was always drama mm -hmm. okay and so they meet a brother cool he ain't about the drama just a peaceful brother. Mm -hmm. They would try to create mm -hmm. some drama because some of them really don't know what to do with peace mm -hmm. because they've never had it. Good point. In relationship dynamics. And you know what? I have to make... Like, I was there. I was once that woman mm -hmm. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know? And when I look back at myself and re and, 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 and fig to figure out why I used why? to do that, mm -hmm. It was a it was a testing mechanism. Absolutely, it was a testing mechanism. Yeah. So I would do things, the the rattle the cage to see how he would respond. But you know what? That's attached to. Let me see how much you love me, because that's how you mm. understand love. Mm -hmm. Love shown in anger. Yeah. And, you yeah. know. So yeah. it's sort of like, okay, yeah. you don't really love me if you don't show some sort of jealousy. So we create situations right. to get a reaction, and then it's like there are some brothers that's not for it. And they're like, and they're all no, be like, it's time for this drama. You know, right, and right. you're like, wait, wait, wait I was just, <laughs> hold on, I was psych. I was just right. playing. I was just playing, right. But I was that woman. Absolutely. I was that woman there who are just of us out there like that. Even, you know, now. And we have to see this in ourselves and work on that. Yeah. Because that's not healthy. It's not. That's not healthy. It's you know, not. But most of us, that's how we understand love, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's yeah. interesting dynamics. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, yes, Ridian. Everything seems better with being positive, talking positive, being an example. Yes. I love it. I can't wait for your books to come out. Um, thank you, Daniel Wasita. I believe in black love. And love to see a black man and woman show affection towards one another. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Affection. Affection. Public display. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Saladin says one of the problems is we have no clue on the science in relationships. We have been removed from the laws that's designed to help uplift and evolve the black family. He says. It's that we have become white folks in black skin. Mm. Rebellion to the divine law, which is our success at mm. any time, at any time. Yeah, and I think no matter what we discuss, we can't take the dynamic of being an oppressed people Compromise. in this nation yep, yep. out of the equation. Absolutely. Because it's, it, it, it goes into every single facet of our lives. And if you don't think so then you really don't understand oppression and on both sides I think if you understand oppression uh, that that definitely that understanding plays out in your relationship you know what I mean you understand then the struggle of the black man in this society as a female mm -hmm. you know that should somehow uh, work on, on, on your behalf in your relationship right right you, because 
if you're with or married to, you're married to a, a black man or you're dating a black man, you already know the struggles that he, he's facing daily. Right. You know, so right. that should, that right. Should, right. You kind of at, at an advantage. You have, you have a head start in that a little bit to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, I don't even really want to go into the whole interracial dating because that what comes to mind when you mm -hmm. say, you know, you understand the struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a whole other topic in and of itself. <laughs> And that's enough topic Jeannie's going to touch on oh, real okay. soon. Yeah, he's okay. going to do a show around that okay. interracial dating and how that affects us, um, our, 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 us. But um, let's see. Daniel says, had a younger brother who really didn't have a masculine figure around as a youngster that told me the relationship I'm in is fake. I understand why he feels this way now. So what do you what do you mean, Daniel? Your relate he thought your relationship because it was doing well is why he thought it was fake. Daniel is a female. Is some I think oh Daniel? I think it's Daniel. Yeah. No, I yeah. think it's a brother. No. Okay, Daniel shit. Daniel now. Rogers. Yeah. We might be we may be related. That's my family name. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah, let us know when you when you said um, he went, didn't have the masculine figure around and as a young son told me the relationship I'm in is fake. I understand why he feels this way now. We'd love to hear a little bit more details about that. Um, and even even with that, um, again, that goes back into our upbringing. Some, most of us, if we didn't grow up with two parents in the home, not understanding the roles. And so when you right. see it in someone else's relationship, you'd be like, why you always have to do everything he say? He telling you every what to do. You don't have your own mind. Mm -mm, I couldn't be in that relationship, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. Yeah, point. Um, and, and that's usually I hear that from the females. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No man gonna tell me what to do right. and all that stuff. And now, and now you know, I, shoot, I, I don't need him. Mm -hmm. And you know, I can, I make my own money. I can do it, da da da. So I don't need him for nothing. Right. And it's like, whoa, right. you know. And that that's that's another dynamic. Why? Oh. That's another dynamic there as to why there is that friction in black love, male female dynamic, right mm -hmm. relationship because of that ladies that whole independent mindset is killing us mm -hmm. it's just i make my own money and, I, and that's money. okay <laughs> songs i'm telling you there's songs written about it yes yes it's like this anthem you yeah, know yeah we dancing and singing to it but behind of it really is it's it's almost like this rebellion you know that's mm. involved in that you know um when you pay attention to it um mm. the whole fem a lot of the whole feminist movement i think played a part in that as well yeah you know in in trying to empower women yeah. women um i think a lot of it probably went a little too far you know because it it if if you're a feminist and your goal is to push the male out of the equation altogether yeah. then you don't gone too far I wonder if it if that has anything to do with so many of the brothers leaving um, the children behind when they leave the relationship because they feel so uh, deflated. And you know, if she don't need me, you know, that she tell me that every day. So if you know, let me just roll, and then yeah. But, but we don't need them. But when you do that, and then he runs, and then you take them to child support because it's really mm -hmm. I've seen situations where. The woman don't necessarily care mm -hmm. if the man is around for the child, but what you're going to do is you're going to support financially. Mm, good point. In other words, the financial piece of it becomes more important than your presence in that child's life. Good teaching, Hanifa. You know, and that's dangerous. That is very dangerous for that child. Right. I think it's, a lot of it becomes like child neglect and abuse. <laughs> it, when it's when like you um and the, to the to another dynamic in that same you know genre we're discussing right where a woman will um keep the child away from the father if he doesn't give her what she wants mm -hmm. like you're not paying me what i want and giving me the money i want in child support well you ain't gonna see your child absolutely and what in the, the in the effect that has on the child yep. forget about the two adults that's supposed to be dealing with this why the child is involved in that to begin with you know what i'm saying the, in the middle of that yeah. but you now place the child as the the the, the pawn yes. as you know yeah you ripping like you you might as well be having two horses on that child's arms and ripping it apart right because especially when the father has a loving uh relationship with his child and, and y'all going through some things mother and father 
and you know y'all not seeing eye to eye on for whatever reason you know and now all of a sudden okay well it becomes well then I'm going to keep your child away from you so you're taking your pain what you feeling and put you know because the child feel whatever we feeling as an adult a child feels 10 times stronger yeah they don't have the uh, the faculties we have to, to be filter. able to filter yeah. and harness up their pain. So when you tell them you can't see your father, when he didn't promise he coming for the weekend, he excited mm -hmm. to see his dad, and he been looking forward for it all week long, and you ask the man, can you have this? And he tell you no, and now all of a sudden you got to tell your son, well, you ain't going with your father this weekend. Imagine how that child takes that information and what goes on in that child when, when you do that to them. I think it's child abuse. So what, what, what can we do to fix all of these issues mm -hmm. that okay. we see in the, in the relationship between the black man and the black woman? What are some of the things that we could possibly do? For me, I'm all about self-healing. Yes, indeed. All me about self-healing. Mm -hmm. And I, I also think it's important that if you are in one relationship and you were hurt, um, whatever that may be, you were hurt by an individual. I believe in taking time. Mm. I believe in cleaning mm. your palate, mm. <laughs> you know, before you jump in mm. to another one. Because what happens is what we are just taking our baggage mm. from one relationship to the next. Mm. And sometimes we get into another relationship and that same baggage, we don't just take it with us, we unpack it. Mm. And we bring it into that relationship. And, and what we're doing is saying, you're gonna help me fold this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna help me fold these clothes. You're gonna help me wash these clothes. You know, mm -hmm. and th that person, that's not fair to that individual. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, that's one way is is healing, allowing ourselves to heal. And this is both for for both male and females. You know, because I feel like males probably do the replacement thing way more than we do. You know, um, instead of waiting and really working on themselves, um, also owning what you contributed to that relationship yes. falling apart in the first place. Very key. You know, what what did I do or what did I do or not do? Very key. You know, let's talk about that within our own selves. And this is where we have to take time. This yeah. is all a part of that healing process. Yeah. And being truthful about it to yeah. yourself. Yeah. You know, looking within yourself and seeing those things that you thought were okay, but they really were detriment to your relationship. You know, and I think it's important, especially after let's say it's a um father the, the the person you're splitting from is also the father of your kids because we're talking about child support and so forth uh, so now we're talking about co-parenting mm -hmm. I think it's very important first of all to heal if you're if you've been wounded in that relationship mm -hmm. and secondly to look at the strengths that that person have because they have them mm -hmm. you've been with them long enough to know <laughs> what those strengths are I you mean that the, the one you just the, the one the ex okay if you're co-parenting with them okay because what happens is we can take two bad things that someone may have and and just Ooh, exaggerate it, it to where we don't even see the hundred other good things that they have about them good point. so it's all about what we focus on you have to find if you're going to co-parent with this person yeah you have to find some good things about them what did you fall in love with in the first place absolutely yeah absolutely we lose sight of all that yes yes yeah, yes. yeah that's a good 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 point yeah. I think too that we really should seek out those who are doing it right yes you know yes. and and, and, and allow, allow them to lead by example absolutely so we have like you know Lakeem said earlier we have some great examples I'm sorry it wasn't Lakeem mm -hmm. there are great examples out here of people who are doing it right or doing it better than we are absolutely I should say uh -huh. you know <laughs> and so learn from them yes. I do an event every an annual event called um um mm, What's the annual event uh, that I do sitting around the, the uh, 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 a hot date with self? Okay. It's called a hot date with self. It's an annual event, and we get together with a lot of women, and we did a panel one time, a panel discussion where um, a panel of elders came on. It was oh, four elders, okay. and they all were married for I think it was like 25 years or more, and they talked to us women in the in the audience about what it takes to sustain a healthy a healthy committed relationship long term mm -hmm. and um you know it was a very of course it was a very interesting discussion but stuff like that learning from those who are doing it 
um, a lot better than we are. If we keep hitting our heads up against the wall and can't figure out what's going on, but there's people in our community or people at, at the church or right. people at, at, the, at, at the job that are, and the, the, the learn from them, sit at their feet and learn and be willing and open to take that advice. Yes. And not, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, well, I don't do it that way. That ain't how I do it in my house. This is how I do it in my house. Yeah. And your house in shambles. And, and, <laughs> de and deal with the pain because the, the, the pain, if it's not dealt with, becomes a block. So if you're in pain and you're hurting and you're bitter, I don't care how many elders you talk to, you're not going to hear them. Agreed. You have to deal with your pain. Agreed. You have to deal with your hurt. You know, and then once you it's start to deal with it, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. We, we have to do it. We have to do the work. It's important. I think a lot of us don't because they're fearful. Of what? Of um, <laughs> the truth about themselves. Oh, yeah. Okay. The truth about themselves. And that we, we want to, that's why we point so far, we point the finger out so much. Right. It's you, you, you doing it. Y'all, you know, it's not my fault. It's you. And, and this is what he's done and da da da. And because when we decide to do, to do the total opposite, of that yeah. then now we got to really look at ourselves as imperfect beings yeah. and we don't want to do that yeah. you know we don't want to do that because we've never had to you know really have to do it right and so right. it becomes a fear it's easier to, to, to hide behind it's your fault the, the fear that we have specifically as black women right mm -hmm. is transparency mm -hmm. being transparent Mm -hmm. You know, being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That is like a big fear. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, yes, yes, yes. Being that vulnerable, vulnerable yes. part. We always have to put yes. on the strong, you know, Good and point. That's, that's almost like tradition. <laughs> that's who yes. it's supposed to be. I think that's a goes in part to why we don't do it either, why right. we don't do the introspect. Mm -hmm. Because then, you know, you, you again, it's the vulnerability. I think we have a caller on the line. Okay, caller, we have, oh, we have a few minutes, so real quick. Um, in 60 seconds, tell us what's on your mind. Your name and who you, where you're calling from? Hello, caller, you there? Okay, well, we may have to um, pull them back up in a little bit. Yeah. So, let's see, what do people, what do you guys think is the, um, you know, the biggest challenge? Caller, are you there? What's your name? Hey, where are you calling from? Yes, hey, family, this is Wasika. Hi, Wasika. And I just wanted to... Hey people, how you guys doing? Mm -hmm. Real quick, I just believe in sisterhood. You know, I represent Sisters United. And I just think that when it comes to relationships, we need more sisters to truly support our sisters who are in decent relationships. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? What does that support look like? Yes, we do. We need to really encourage you. Know, even if you on the outside looking in and you see that your sister is wrong, Step to that sister in love and encourage her to look at what she may be doing, help her to maybe correct what she may be doing wrong so that she can continue to sustain a wonderful relationship with her king. Mm -hmm. So you need to surround yourself with true sisters that want to see your happiness. Mm. Oh, and not to not the girl forget him. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the forget him yeah. crew. Yeah, all that negative women talking about. Girl, you don't need him anyway. Get away from that negative vibe mm. and be around the sisters who believe in black love, who believe in I want for my sister what I want for myself. Right. And let's right. start encouraging one another and uplifting one another and making sure that that solid relationship remains because then that energy and positivity that my sister is experiencing, I myself will experience it as well. Mm, beautiful statement. Yes. Thank you, Thank Sister you, Wasita. That is Sister Wasita, Sisters United. And if you guys want to know more about her organization, you can go on her website. Wasita, are you still there? She's still there? No, she's gone. Okay, I believe it's Sisters United. I never, she will post it. I, yes. I can guarantee you. She will post her web address right on the um, downstream. And she can use some support there too, family. So check her out. I got, um, what I got it from is you, whatever you want, you have to be around people that want the same things. Yes. Yes. You know, so if you want a healthy, strong relationship, family unit, you're trying to build that, you need to get around people who are doing the same thing that equally yoke yes that, that goes further than just absolutely um, in your own personal male female relationship yeah and if you want to be you want to come out of being bitter 
you know, <laughs> angry, get around people who have went through it and came out mm. or who are also on that same journey. Yeah. You know, because that's that's not healthy to take into any relationship. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about going to like counseling sessions? I I I encourage it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. I encourage it. <laughs> um yes, if you need someone to talk to that can take a neutral stance, I would definitely encourage them. Counseling. Yeah. 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 And together, even if there's also family therapy sometimes. You right. Know? Yeah. Well, individual counseling first. Right. Yeah. You are tuned into the Empower Hour. This I am Al Kumar, and this is your sister here, Miss Hanifa. Miss Hanifa, <laughs> and we are online every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m., and we take a different discussion, a topic of discussion every week. And we bring you in on it and we discuss it and we talk about it and we you know hash it out and come to some some beneficial conclusions that can help us all um let's, let's tune into what uh our viewers are saying yeah yeah ridian says there are not enough examples in our circle of immediate family and friends we, we learn from the wrong people. I agree. Yeah, that's Very that true. whole pattern thing. Yep. Then we repeat the patterns and we and they become normalized. And that's us. the training ground. Your family. Yeah. Absolutely. That's where you learn. Yeah. You take what you learn into the world. Good point. Yeah. Hey Eric. Um Saladin says proper communication is key. And humility is a key hold factor on, on. to the willingness to hear each other. Yeah, that that you can't get away from that communication no. thing. No. You can't get everything we're talking about. It's centered around communicating. Yep. Really? Yeah, I agree with that. You wanted to add anything to that, Renee? No, I don't. Communication definitely is, a key, is key. Get uh -huh. and getting your ego out the way. Woo hoo! Yes. And both male and female. Male and female egos. And female <laughs> egos. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, it looks like we got another caller oh, on the wow. line. Okay. Studio hotline is two four zero four five 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 nine three zero four five nine three. Four, excuse me, 240-455-5934 is the studio hotline number if you want to chime in on this discussion. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, lady. This is Raymond again. Oh, hi, Raymond. I have a very important point that I want to make without typing it in. Okay. Because you all aren't saying that all of the types and messages you cannot keep up with for so much. Okay, real quick, what you got for us? Real quick. <laughs> Those of us that are trying to change, that are trying to practice positive values, you know, we struggle with this other thing that we deal with in our society where we're not around enough people that are trying to change as well. Oh, yeah. So while we're trying to do better, change things, have a positive message, we're still kind of dealing with people that are being judgmental, mm -hmm. stabbing us in our back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's so hard to just put it all in one bubble. Good point. Because we're all just not on the same page yet. So those of us who do want to move forward, now we're with how do we open ourselves up to people that aren't ready yet? Good point. Who aren't on the same wavelength yet. Thank you again for um, another good point, Redian. You want to jump on that <laughs> one? Yes. <laughs> I really believe in... Uh, I isolation for a time I think so mm -hmm. because the people that you're talking about the reason why we have a difficult time separating ourselves from those individuals is because oftentimes they are loved ones mm -hmm. they're family mm -hmm. they're people who are we've been friends with for years mm -hmm. you know all of us can think of one friend mm -hmm. as soon as I said that I'm telling you they're gonna come to your mind one friend who you have to prepare your mind when you go around them <laughs> You gotta prepare one, your whole, just one. your whole energy center. You have to prepare, you know, in hopes that you come, you come out <laughs> intact. Okay, so we all know those people that you know just kind of bring your energy down. We also know those people that just constantly make withdrawals from us, but they don't make any deposits. Ooh, yeah. You know, um, so I would say sometimes you have to you have to get away from that, yeah. even if it's for a time like six months whatever the time may be yeah. the people who matters and who love you yeah. unconditionally will be there when you come back from your healing that is true what my where my mind goes to as she spoke was uh the whole society thing the cultural thing oh yeah the media mm -hmm. the tv you know what i'm saying how that. we are influenced by that media 
And you know, we turn on shows and think it's just simply entertaining. I'm going to turn on all these uh, reality shows and I'm going to sit here and have myself a good time laughing at these people and not understanding the science behind the psychological warfare. And how the subconscious works. And how the subconscious works yes. and how you are taking all that into your, your mind subconsciously. So you might as well be in the, you know, living it out. Right. Really, right there in right. your living room. Absolutely. Because much as all that drama that you taken in so it plays itself out in your relationships yeah. and don't even realize I remember uh, going to a Umar Johnson lecture in Baltimore and I'll never forget this he said this he said all the reality shows you ladies like to watch is a little bit of you in everything That's that you like mm -hmm. it's a little bit of you in everything that you like but that goes back to the love piece too I feel like the we've allowed television to define what love looks like to us mm -hmm. so when we have a brother that don't bring us the roses all the time you know <laughs> right or wine and dine us every chance he gets or you know it's like well he he just ain't doing what he needs to do you right. know and, and maybe he's Okay, so there's this book, and I, I, I live by this, called The Five Love Languages, right? And I like it because what the book is about is finding out what your love language is. And what it means is that you take a test, you say, okay, this is how I understand love. Mm -hmm. Because what the book is saying is the way I understand love may not be the way you understand love. But because this is how I understand love, this is my love language, that's the language I speak. But it's not the language you understand as far as, you know... My love language when I did the test is quality time, mm -hmm. which means that you can do whatever you want. You can tell me I love you a million times. If you do not spend quality time with me, I don't believe it. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. I, I don't believe it at all because quality time is how I understand love. Okay. You know, there's, uh, I think it's like five of, yeah, it is five of them, sorry. So some, um, there's one that's communication. Some people, you know, understand love to people communicating with them. Right. Uh, some people like to be affirmed. Right. You know, it's a really interesting book, you right. know, yeah. Right. Um, so that that's what came to mind. It's it's like we have this uh, uh, thing that is, uh, this thing about love where it, we think one size fits all. Right. And we all right. don't understand love the same way. Right. We just don't. So you so basically if you're watching a, a, a show and they're depicting one of those love languages on the show and now you're thinking that you your relationship's supposed to be this the exact is same thing, way. This is what it's supposed and to look you meet like. a man who loves you just dearly but may yeah. not be doing the things that they want you watching them on a show, but it becomes a problem for you. Right. Because it's a different love language. Maybe he's not taking you um, hiking because he's afraid of heights. Mm. It has nothing to do with love. Mm. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I'm big on how y'all know if y'all watch. I'm big on how that social that that media thing plays on 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 us in every way, and we don't recognize what yeah. we're doing to ourselves. And so, like you you watching the drama play out on the screen mm -hmm. and you think you're just watching the show entertainment and then next thing you know you got a whole bunch of drama in your own personal relationship and you you know you can't figure it out yeah because that's what you put it that's what you feeding yourself yeah. a whole rack of drama and so it's gonna play it's gotta come out whatever goes in must come out so up must come down and you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's the polarities of nature so it's going to come out and it plays itself out a lot of times in our relationships. And I know we're over time, so we're about to wrap up. So I think for me, my thing is if you're in a relationship or you're looking to be in one, you've been in relationships and they haven't worked, step back for a minute okay. and, and, and really reflect. Um, reflect and assess. Look at yourself. Go within. Yeah. You know, don't focus on everything that that person is doing wrong. Mm. Kind of look at where can I, you know, do better? Yeah. What areas can I do better? Yeah. You know, because oftentimes it's not necessarily what someone is doing, even though they should be held responsible as well. Right. But your reaction can really determine, mm. you know, the outcome right. of and, it. Right. Yeah. And sometimes our reaction can even influence the other person to come at us at a different way. Absolutely. So, yeah. And my advice would be to just seek those seek out those who are doing it doing it better than you are that are that if you if you have a, a goal in mind and you can't seem to meet it in your relationship and there's people that you can go to or even people strangers that now the world wide web yes. gives us so <laughs> much value when it comes to that kind of stuff seek information from others who are who have good strong wise counsel that can assist you right you know mm -hmm. and and don't be shy to 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 try tip to implement if it's something whatever you're doing is wrong what's so wrong with taking some advice maybe 
you can get it right, yeah. you know, but you don't know that unless you you the advice. They say insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same outcome. Yeah. All right, family. <laughs> that is our Empower Hour. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for tuning thank in. Thank you for and tuning in. And thank you for your in. input. We're going to go back and read all your we comments. We will. <laughs> we will read all your comments. Sorry we couldn't get them all on, on live. But as you know, you know, these relationship topics get heated. Tune in next week, 2 p.m. We're coming right back at you with something more strong and powerful. Yes. All right. All right. Peace. <laughs> okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. That goes by so fast.